What's going on? What is going on? We back at it again. Another hot review. Drams on deck. And today, today we I'm looking for something real. Something I'm looking for some nice, delicate in the building. So I guess I'm going to come over here. If, like, this is my new arcade cabinet I got down here. That was pretty cool. I got it wrapped in 80s theme. You see all the old 80s stuff. Urkel, new edition. LL, Goonies. Blood sport, Crockett and Tubbs, Miami Vice, Prince, all the throwbacks. So, got like over 17,000 games. About to get some Tekken in later. I'm about to whip my son's ass in some one-on-one on this. He think he all that, but he really not. But anyway, as lovely as you are, back in the day, it's not about you right now. It's about you. And what we want to do is we want to come over here and what do we got right here? What do we got right here today? The Paul John. You see it. You see it. We're going to do a little of that. Little Indian whiskey is in the hands. Paul John. This is going to be the PX, Pedro Menez. This is about at 48%. This is just the box for us. A nice little cool, you know, simple box. A pull tab on it. And then the bottle for that is right here. So this is the actual bottle for it. So nice darkness to it. Obviously coming from the aging in the PX, which is a... Sweet dessert like wine. We'll get into that in just a sec. And then we're going to put that right up in here. Here's the Brilliance. This is 46%. And these bottles, like I said, man, it's Indian whiskey. So it's not, you know, single malt, but it's not scotch. Scotch has to come from Scotland. It's come from Indian whiskey. So we're going to dive all into it. Paul John Brilliance and PX Cast on deck for review. Let's go. You see what time it is. Drams on deck. Today... As promised, we got two Indian whiskeys in the building. Today, we have the Paul John PX right here on my left, your right. And over here, we have the uh, Paul John Brilliance. Um, this bottle at 48%. This is bottle at uh, 46%. Um, so this is this is not my first uh, bottles of, uh, of, I would say, Indian whiskey. I actually have... Uh, some other Indian whiskey that I actually, I, I haven't yet to review, but I have some Amroot back there, which is another uh, Indian whiskey. Um, Amroot and Paul John are probably two premier Indian whiskeys, and these are single malts, single malt distilleries out of India, not in Scotland. So these, in my personal opinion, are some of the more upper scale one of the Indian single malts. I really started getting to Indian uh, whiskey maybe about a few years ago. I don't have as many, obviously, as I do scotch or bourbon or other um, whiskeys, but same way with Japanese whiskey. They they have their upper echelon, and I think Paul John is a, a perfect example of some of that. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Buffalo Trace Distillery, I think I had, the first time I had, we had some of the Paul John, well, not all of them, but a few of them, was at the uh, Des Moines uh, Whiskey Festival 2021. Uh, they had it in town, and, under, and I went to the uh, Buffalo Trace uh, in their section. They had... Uh, maybe about five or six Paul Johns. If you ever check out my Instagram page, I actually did a, a little small video or a small vlog of that table and, and um, so some of the tastes that they had. So if you ever have time, in the description box, there's a link from my Instagram page. If you scroll down maybe to that time frame of November of 2021, you'll see those uh, multiple video, uh, videos of that. But nevertheless, um, these two are not on the tasting table, but these are uh, something that after I tried some of that Paul John, it kind of reinitiated my Indian uh, whiskey want. And so I got these two here. This Paul John PX, uh, I got that here in town. I think I paid around $100 for it. It was around $100. Um, I've seen it online as much as up to $130, uh, but I paid 100, around $100 for it. And for this Paul John Brilliance, um, I think I got this locally as well. This was not quite as much. This probably was only running me around maybe, I don't know, 60 ish something like that, um, $60, so it wasn't super expensive. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, they had also, in this particular expression with this box, I'll open it up real quick. It's nothing <laughs> super fancy, but this is just the inside of the, the box here, and, you know, close it, has a little tap, quick little 360. They have an Oloroso as well. So they had the PX and the Oloroso. They both ran $100. I decided to go with the PX. Could have went either way, but, you know, I was like, well, I'm not going to get them both, so I'll get the PX. So I've had that PX for about maybe six months now, and I've had this probably around almost the same time frame. Uh, so they've, they've definitely, uh, you know, been in, in there for a little while. And side by side, you can clearly see that the PX is a lot darker. This is like a, almost like a dark amber color. This is a light color right here, very light. 
Uh, some specs on this, the brilliance is at 46%. Uh, this is uh, in uh, first fill bourbon barrels. Um, it's aged three to five years and it's bottled at uh, uh, 46%. This one right here is aged for, the PX is aged for five years of first fill bourbon barrels and it's aged another two additional years in PX uh, barrels. And it's, aged, it's said that the barrels itself is around 60 years old. So if that is the uh, case, I'm quite sure there's a lot of uh, uh, deep rooted, uh, sweet, uh, uh, you know, pretty much PX in that barrel if it's 60 years old. But anyway, so what I'm looking at is a total of seven years, five in first fill, uh, bourbon, two in uh, uh, PX. So like I said, 48% and 46%. So I'm going to start, as always, we're going to nose it, we're going to taste it, we're going to score it. I'm going to start with the left-hand side with this PX. We're going to nose it, taste it, and we're going to score it. <sighs> wow. That's a little interesting because normally when I smell PX, the first thing I get is super dark ripe fruits and i do get some of that but i get like a little popcorn caramel smell on this as well you get like a nut character and then you get then once i really know a little more i just want to get like a dark prune on here but I, my initial thought prop going into like a you know px is sweet if you don't know px is a, is a form of a, like a dessert sherry it's very sweet so initially i would just assume i was gonna get a lot of sweetness and I'm getting a little bit more sophisticated than I thought I would get on the nose, which is not a bad thing at all. Like I said, I got like a popcorn, caramel, nut, like a very, like a walnut, something like that. You can definitely smell a nut on here. Spices. Then you get, like I said, that, then you, when you keep nosing it, that's when you get a hint of like a berry or a plum. <sighs> not bad at all. Not bad. And I like, if you don't know, I like my dark colored uh, whiskeys. I definitely do. <sighs> yeah. Definitely pick up a lot of nut character on there. Without further ado, let's take this first sip and see what we got. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Similar to, to the nose, what do I get on the palate? Mm. All right now, let that first sip go down slow. Mm. Take one more quick sip and then I'm gonna give you a little bit more notes. Mm. Mm. So, On the palate, you definitely get a nut. It's heavy on spice, like cinnamon, nutmeg, all spice. You get like a very like a like a walnut. And then you roll it around, you get a little bit of raisin, a little plum, a little cocoa on there. You get like that dark berries. It's very like I said, for as dark as it is, I thought it'd be like a straight, like a sherry bomb. That is not a sherry bomb. It's, it's, a, it's more, it's more well-rounded than just a sherry bomb, which is a good thing. It's like I said, if, even if, if, you know, either way, I like both. I like well-roundedness and I like sherry bomb. So either way, it's a win. But like I said, you get like a lot of spice. And that's what I was surprised because, you know, when you're coming from scotches, you know, sometimes when you, when you cross over to Indian single malt, you don't know what to expect. I would tell you, at least on this part, John, you, they, there are, there are a lot of spice. I'm heavy on the spice. And I like that. <clears throat> but you get like, like I said, nutmeg, cinnamon. You get that 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 nice, rich deepness of the of the berries on there from that PX. You get, you know, what I'm saying that like a raisin, plum, and a lot of that that nut character, which is surprising. I really, you know, I'm I'm kind of shocked by it. Um, like I said, forty eight percent. So it has a, it has a little heat, but not much. I mean, if you're used to drinking, you know, spirits neat, um, this shouldn't be a problem. You know, if you're someone who always, you know, drinks mixed drinks or you don't drink straight drinks or then you know it may be a little hot for you but uh for me i think 48 percent is just fine for me um as you saw earlier i took the for second sip i do a little bit of water in here i want to see if that opens up a little bit more um but nevertheless um my thoughts of it very you know like i said i like a, the spice character is, is definitely there nut spice and then you get like i said that that ripeness from the px that berry that raisin that plum like a little bit on the that's more of the finish um Oh no, it's a good spirit. It's a good dram. I like it. Um, 
like I said, I was expecting a sherry bomb, like a two years in, in, P, in PX Sherry, 60 year old barrel. I was expecting like a straight sherry bomb. And you know, you get a lot more sophisticated, different things in this one. So, um, like I said, a little, little surprising, but like I said, but I, I'm, I'm saying that and not to be like, it's not bad though. It's not bad at all. So, uh, anyway, let me take one more quick sip of this water. To me, um, still has some very same similarity. If anything, I put a little bit more of that nut character up, but with or without water is fine. You can do it. I don't think it needs water. It's not super hot, um, but nevertheless, same characters. I think, the, but that nut on a finish, that, that walnut character that I mentioned earlier seems to be lingering a lot more on the palate than, than anything else. That's what I'm picking up with the water. But nevertheless, uh, like I said, spice, nut, get that richness uh from the share but it's, it's not super oily it has like medium oiliness to it um like i said it's not super hot it's not bad at all um like i said so if you're expecting a sherry bomb that that's not what this is um it has, it has a lot more uh like i said it has some other elements outside of just the richness of a share which is not not super rich on here because like i said it was it's aged two years in the px so it's not like it's it's a finish in the px so it's not if it was, it, maybe if it was all seven years in PX, then maybe that would be the case. But two years, um, definitely imparts some ripeness, but not, but don't expect a sherry bomb. Um, all in all, good dram. Um, I've had to rate this one of a 10, 10 being the best for me, drams on deck. On um, taste factor alone, um, I give this a, a 8.25. Eight and one quarter out of a 10 for me. Um, I think it's good. That's a very good score. Um, like I said, I, I like the, the ripeness, uh, the nut character in it. Uh, that's surprising, the spice character to it. Um, I enjoy that. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It, I, I personally think that they're a bit overpriced. I mean, it's $100 or in some places $125. So I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to knock it a half a point because I think that it's overpriced a little bit, you know. Um, though I do enjoy the finishing part of PX, I, I believe that it's a bit overpriced. I think that it should it'd be probably priced around what this is, around 70 bucks or something of that nature. So I'm not going to have a point. So when I, that's, that's when I factor in taste, price, availability, everything out the door, I'm knocking down to 775 out the door. Um, 775 out of a 10, very good score for the PX. Um, um, I, I'd like to say a Paul John Indian single malt. Um, if you, they also have a lot of other, um, Paul John's, they have the Christmas, uh, every year they have like a Christmas edition. So, um, it's not the same. So it's every year, like the, it's a different characteristic, but, um, you would normally see those at any of those, you know, your, depending on where you live at your store, you may find it, you may not find it, but, um, but just FYI, they do have a year release of the Christmas one. I have not purchased that yet. I came, I had it in my hand when I went to Beanie's. Uh, a few months ago in Illinois, right outside Chicago, I think I was in a Lincoln Park store, and I and I had I had the Christmas, I think it was 2020 Christmas bottle in my hand. It was on sale, so I think it was on like maybe I don't know 50, 60 bucks. Normally it'd be almost you know 80 or 90 or even more than that. It was on sale, and I I had it in my hand, but because I had like five, six other bottles, I, somebody had to go. I couldn't get them all because I was you know I was just like you know what's I got all these bottles in my car. I got to take at least one of them out. So somehow the Christmas cake found its way out of my hand and back on the shelf. But nevertheless, um, just, you know, if you had it, the Christmas, any of the Christmas editions, let me know. And, you know, hit me in the comment box. Let me know your opinions of it. And the Christmas edition, it has like, it's, it's like, a, it's, it changes every year, but they have like Christmas wrapping paper look. So that the, the bottle is it's shaped like this. It doesn't really come. I have not seen it in a, in a box like this. It comes in, in a tube like this. And it, and it has like different, uh, you know, decoration like of, of a Christmas paper type of thing or, you know, gen, you know, that type of stuff on it. So be looking out for that. So anyway, let me take one quick sip of water. I'm going to jump right over here to the Ball John Brilliance. As I said earlier, three to five years on first field bourbon, uh, 46%. And uh, like I said, very light, very light color. Like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of young. The thing about these these single malt whiskeys, these are not old whiskeys. Like, you know, typically when, you, when you're sipping on a, a scotch, not all, but some, but most scotches are well above five years. Not, you know, so with that being said, though, 
these definitely have a maturity and because I think it's because of the uh, the environment like it's a very tropical climate out there in India so I said is so the when it, the evaporation part of the barrel each barrel they they evaporate I think 12 to 13 percent every year so that that further evaporation sometimes sometimes and somehow kind of incorporates more um, I, I guess you would say good things about it. I guess it's the best way I can put it. Not always, but I really like those. I really like these. And it's another you know, whiskey that I like also that I, I've been sipping for, and like I said, a while is the Amaru. That, like I said, that's another Indian whiskey. Don't sleep on that. So if you don't see Paul John, you see Amaru. I, I mean, Amaru is just as good. Some might like it better. I, with, between Paul John and Amaru, I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I have an Amaru right behind me. So just for face value, here's an Amaru right here. Uh, it's another Indian whiskey, Amroot. Um, I have like three or four of the uh, bottles, not this particular one, but other expressions. This one's a limited edition. This one right here is about like 50%. And it's a Madura finish. So anyway, the, the, the Paul John, Amroot, they're some solid ones. But anyway, um, like I said, man, don't don't sleep on it. If you if you look for something new, like if you not want a bourbon, if you don't want a scotch, but you want a whiskey, it's something different, you know, obviously there's Irish whiskeys, there's Japanese whiskeys, and there's definitely Indian whiskeys. If you don't know, um, that's why these videos are here, so pe you know, people will know about that. So anyway, let's see what we have on this nose, on this Paul John Brilliance, and let's see what we got. So I get that spice, definitely get that spice, like I said, that, like you can really pick up like some allspice, nutmeg. Then you get the vanilla from the, you know, <sighs> sweet oak, honey. I get like a small drying nut character on his nose as well. So it doesn't smell like a traditional bourbon. If you're wondering, like, because three, five years on first bill bourbon cast. So it, it, I mean, obviously the, oak, you know, like the sweet oak, vanilla, honey, those are some of the nose characteristics of a bourbon. But I also pick up a lot of heavy spice on here as well. Same as I did with the PX, so. Very, very heavy on the vanilla and the spice on here. Not bad at all. All right, now. Take a sip of this burst and see what we got. Cheers. Mm. All right, now. It's forty six percent, but it, it sips like a grown ass man. When I say by that, the ABV, if I know it, it feels slightly hotter than forty six. For some reason, it, this t it, to me, it, as far as the hotness, I still like I like it though. But it seems j probably a little bit hotter than this, and this is two percent higher. So, but as always, I'm gonna take two sips, saturate my palate, so I can really dive deeper into these notes for you. Cheers. Vanilla honey, big on this one. Big on the vanilla, big on the honey. We get like a lot of spice on here too. This is really good. I really like this one. So if you like a bourbon character, you know how not all, but certain bourbons has a nice vanilla sweet oak note. You get a lot of that on this, a lot of that. So then you get a lot of spice. I say spice, like I said, nutmeg, cinnamon. I don't always pick up that spice character on with bourbon. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you get like rye spice, or if it's a weeder one, you get a lot more sweet notes. This one is, is sweet. Like I said, you get like the vanilla, you get the sweet oak, the honey, but then you get that, like I said, that 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 nutmeg, that, that's kind of spice on there. Apples, cinnamon, like some, it, it's, it's like a graham cracker crust type of thing on here. I taste that on it. It's, it's really good. It shocked me. I was like, wow, it drinks, you know, how, if I didn't know it was 46%, I would think it was maybe 50% ABV. It is for, or maybe a little bit, you know, anywhere from 50, 52 percent was 46, though. But I, if you know me, I like high proof. So that's a good thing. That's not I'm not that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing that it drinks a little bit hotter than than what the the um, ABV would suggest. Uh, but all in all, man, I, I really like this. This brilliance one. And, and, you know, 
I, I like the that sweet oak and then that vanilla is just really, really nice and it coats the palate very well. So um the, neither neither one of these are like super oily or viscous, uh, but they're not super thin either. This has a medium mouthfeel to it. Um but yeah, um this is younger, so um definitely, definitely in it, it. I like I like that even though it's younger, I love the the spices of character I'm getting. I dropped just because I'm doing a review, I did a couple uh, you know, forty percent typically I wouldn't do that. But anyway I a little bit of water here, so I want to see if that uh, enhances or changes in any way. So, one quick sip with the water, then I'm going to give you a score. Very similar, not much change. You get their bacon spice kind of rolls around a little bit more in the mid palate. When I first put it on my tongue, I get a heavy dose of that vanilla, that sweet oak. And as I go roll it around and get that mid palate right in the middle of the tongue, that's when I really pick up a lot, a huge amount of that spice and vanilla. It really kicks in a lot. A graham cracker crust. You know, I like it. It has a little bit of hint of apples on here too. I like it. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Um, scoring wise, one to ten, ten being the best for me drams on deck. This is, I mean, this different, but my I like it probably similar as I do this. So, um, I give this one um out of a ten, a eight two five as well. They have slightly this diff, their differences. Or I mean, this is more darker roots. It's more like the. The vanilla, sweet oak, that type of thing, honey. Um, but my, my enjoyment is pretty equal. I thought I would like this a lot more than I were the burgers, but that's not the case. I like them equally. I don't think one is much better than the other, even though they are, they're different. Don't get me wrong. There's some differences, but I, to me, I enjoy them just as equally. So um, one, to me, is not really significantly better than the other. I mean, that's my opinion. But if you're more of a person who are like a bourbon lover or something like that, you may tend to like this one more. But, you know, either, each tomato tomato. But for me, it's an 825 as well. And this one, out the door, I'm going to keep it at 825. So this one I knock because of the price point. This one I think is relatively priced. So I'm, I'm not going to knock it. So I'm going to leave it at 825. So I think value-wise, if you're in the store and you're looking for, you know, uh, Indian whiskey before, you know, by chance, between these two, I would say value-wise, I would prefer the Brilliance because it's cheaper. That's mainly the reason why. And I think you could probably find it. See, this this is like a, I don't know, a special release. Something. You don't, but this PX, you don't see this everywhere. You'll see Paul Jones, but you won't always see the PX or the Oloroso that they come in. The Oloroso looks exactly like this box on differences. It just says Oloroso to the PX. But nevertheless, they come out 100 bucks and sometimes more. It just depends. But nevertheless, um, this, you'll be able to see a lot more brains than you would PX. So because of the price point, is I think it's relatively priced, and you don't, and, and if you you don't really have to hunt it down, this is or depending on where you live at. But it's I would say this is more available. Let's put it that way, for lack of a better word. So because of that, I, I would if I could, if I was you, and I was a star, I would choose one. You know, you can go either way, but I would go with the brilliance, me personally, just because of that, because of the price point. But taste wise, I don't think, you know, I mean obviously. Um, Taste is king, so whatever your taste profile, maybe you like this this taste profile slightly more with those with the dark fruits and um, the more of a nut character. If that and the, even you know they both have spice on it, so maybe that's more of your lane. You may lend towards that flavor profile, but you know, like I said, value wise, I think the brands is better as far as the, the for the value. But anyway, they're both eight two five out the door. Drams on deck. Paul John Indian whiskey on deck for review. Hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, it was good. And if you don't know, on the bottom, looking back, them they have the batch numbers and date that this bottle was uh, put together. This is bottle of uh, July um, 2019. So, like I said, batch number three was bottled on, uh, like I said, 6 July 2019. So, that's about three years, three years old. And this one right here has the same. So, anyway, just FYI, it, it does have some people, some whiskey nerds like to know stuff like that. So, just thought I'd put it out there. They do have the, the batch numbers and the bottle dates on, the, on, on as far as part of the specs on these bottles but anyway um paul john indian whiskey hope you enjoyed the review if you did hit the like button and subscribe like subscribe for free also have a link from instagram page that I stated earlier you can check that out and, um let me know there's a lot of bottles that i have on there that i have not yet reviewed some of them i did um so be sure to check that out 
And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the review, man. I hope you get something out of it. And that's what we do this for. So let me know your comment. Hey, please always hit me in the comment description. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I love interacting with you guys. You're my drinking buddy. So please let me know your thoughts on your, and if you had a Paul John, if you ever had these two, uh, or if you've had an Amber or any other Indian whiskey, let me know. I would love to interact and let me know your experiences with it. So anyway, stay tuned. More hot reviews coming your way. Drams on deck. Yes, sir. Thank you.